most of this lecture is pretty, some of it is kind of advanced, I think, for like a 10 year old. So. Okay. Okay, go ahead. ready? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, um, so let me just back up here. <laughs> I guess uh, we had a little problem with the microphone. <coughs> um, so yeah, uh, you can review these slides whenever you want. Uh, you can access them on the website. Um, so just you can go over anything that's confusing. Um, basically, we're talking about atmosphere and weather versus climate. So weather is talking about a specific point in time. Um, what is the temperature? What is the pressure in the air? Uh, which way is the wind blowing um, and climate is talking about what has the weather been like in the past and we use the information um, to kind of predict how it might be in the future so if every June in Bangkok it rains 10 days we can say okay next year it'll probably rain about 10 days if it's been raining 10 days for the last year. Um, so these are different. Climate's talking about a huge amount of information that's been gathered in the past and it's using that information to predict climate in the future. Um, it helps describe a place or a region. So you could say, um, you know, the climate in Sweden is colder than the climate in South America. And um, that's just a general statement based on the climate information that's been taken by really cool geologists. Um, so that's just the difference between these two. And just try to, try to remember that. This is just a short definition of each. Um, what is the atmosphere made of? Um, the atmosphere is a collection of gases that's uh, formed outside of the earth. Um, so they form different layers based on which gases are present and they perform different, they have different roles, they, they do different things, these layers. And uh, it's important to know that they're made up of different gases. Um, the biggest gas that's there, um, the most of the atmosphere is made of nitrogen. And you can see from this chart that over 75% of the atmosphere is nitrogen, which is kind of weird. You wouldn't normally think that um, nitrogen would be most of the atmosphere. You'd think, well, oxygen, this is what I breathe into my lungs. Uh, I don't use, I don't breathe. You know, nitrogen doesn't help me, you know, to breathe. It's oxygen. But actually, um, nitrogen is really, really, really important. Um, it helps plants grow, it helps animals get nutrients, we eat a lot of things that have nitrogen in it. Um, it's a huge, hugely important element. That's why there's so much of it, it's because it's used so much um, in sustaining life. And uh, it also perform. it has many roles in the atmosphere. Uh, you have other gases here, but they only take up a very small part of the atmosphere, you have carbon dioxide, CO2, and which is what we breathe out of our lungs, and uh, you know argon, and then you have this little tiny sliver, which is a bunch of different types of gas. So you may have helium or you know all kinds of different gases that are very important, um, but there's only very little. But but because they're there, um, a lot of a lot of cool things can happen. Um, so what makes up the atmosphere? Um, we just talked about some of the elements that make up the atmosphere. Um, water vapor is a huge part of the atmosphere. Um, it is basically water that's been turned into gas. Um, and the, um, it, it absorbs heat from the earth, heat that's coming up from the earth, and heat that's coming from the sun. So rays of sun come down and hit the clouds and the heat is trapped into the cloud. The, the water is able to uh, absorb the heat. Um, and this is really important because if we didn't have this kind of thing happening, 
there would be huge changes in temperature. So the atmosphere helps to maintain a, to keep a constant temperature. And uh, if we had no, nothing to gather the, the heat, it would be, when the sun was out, it would be really, really hot. And when it wasn't out, it would be really, really cold. And, it, and this kind of absorbing of heat by water vapor is what keeps us able to live on this planet. If, if there wasn't water vapor or water in general, um, there would be this huge difference in temperature between day and night, and we wouldn't be able to live. Um, ozone, this is a big word um, in, in the atmosphere. It's, it's very important. You've probably heard it before, but if you haven't, um, it's just a fancy way of saying uh, three oxygens together, three oxygens bound together. And what it does is it protects UV, from the earth and, and it doesn't it doesn't protect all UV uh, UV is what um, you know when uh, people who have really white skin come to Bangkok and they get all sunburned that's because they are being exposed to UV radiation um, this is uh, this is the, the the sun burning your skin is because of UV radiation and uh, the ozone it helps to filter that so if, if the ozone wasn't there uh, you know, you would be burned immediately if you walked outside in the sun. Um, you, you would get a burn on your skin very badly. Um, so still UV comes in. It's why we get sunburned or suntan. But uh, it's filtered heavily by the ozone. And we'll talk more about that uh, later in the lecture. But um, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me or... Um, review these lecture slides. Um, so humans, how do humans affect the atmosphere? Well, they, they affect the atmosphere a lot. Um, and mainly uh, in the last 200 years, we've been releasing gases that aren't really normal for the atmosphere. And uh, a fancy word for this is called emissions. Um, so emissions are just the strange gases that we kind of that come from our vehicles from our cars from scooters from factories the the emissions are the gases or you know the toxins um, in this case that are released from these factories and, and machines um, sometimes it's not a totally new gas um, co2 for example um, is is a gas that occurs naturally. Um, methane is a gas that occurs naturally. But emissions from transport vehicles um, are just, these gases are released in CO2, for example, um, is released in really high amounts. Lots of it is released. And when you have too much of one kind of gas, uh, you create pollutants. And uh, emissions from transport vehicles so this is this is a fancy way of saying you know cars or planes or uh, scooters um, account they, they are responsible for uh, nearly half the pollutants on on the planet so um, cars are huge and they're used in almost every country a lot and uh, it adds up and this is really affecting our atmosphere and we'll talk more about this and you could do an entire class or 10 classes on how these pollutants affect the atmosphere. But for now, just know that the humans are very, they, they play a big role in our atmosphere today. Okay, so this is just a pie, two pie charts. Um, you don't need to memorize this. Um, just just kind of make a note of it and you can refer back to this if, if you find it really interesting but this is basically uh, pollutants and the thing to take from this slide um, don't worry too much about the details but um, we know that the major pollutant is carbon monoxide okay so this is C uh, This is just CO. 
Okay, and this is a form of, this, this comes from CO2, but this is monoxide, uh, and this is, becomes, this is bad for our atmosphere. So the natural form we see in nature is carbon dioxide, which means two oxygens, but we have carbon monoxide, which uh, for, for various reasons, we don't need to go into the details, but just know that carbon monoxide is bad for the atmosphere. And it's because it has reactive properties and it's, it's got certain things. If you are interested in why carbon monoxide is bad, feel free to email me and I will respond in detail. Um, but uh, where does this come from? And like we just talked about, um, it comes from, it comes from uh, transportation. Most of it comes from transportation. And so here we, you can see this is industrial process which is just a fancy way of saying factories or power plants or big gigantic um, machines that help people in general to have either electricity, plumbing, water. Um, these are industrial processes. Um, miscellaneous, this is a huge word. All this means is, is you know, random things, anything. Um, Solid waste disposal. This is like sewer uh, things. This is um, garbage. Um, you know, this would be just the way that we clean up our our waste material. Um, this uses a lot of factory um, fuel and creates pollutants. Um, and this is uh, fuel combustion. So this is fuel as well. Um, but this is not important. Just know that most of it is almost 50% comes from transportation and the main pollutant is carbon monoxide and you can see these are this word oxide in here um, and when we get more into chemistry or, or if you learn uh, become chemist you'll, you'll understand that an oxide um, is reactive and it really will uh, it can bond with other things and, and create serious problems in our atmosphere so um, Transportation, almost half, carbon monoxide, CO, with one O and one C. This is not what we breathe out. This is something different, and it's very bad um, when it's in large amounts. Okay, so what, what would the atmosphere look like if we could see the layers, which we can't because these are gases that we can't see. But uh, what would it look like? Um, Basically, it's very dense towards the surface of the Earth. And as you go up from the surface of the Earth, it becomes thinner. And this thinness and thickness is just how close are the atoms to one another. So how close are these uh, particles to one another? And uh, as you get closer to the Earth, they're, they're closer together. And uh, the closer together they are, the more things they can filter out um, and mainly I'm talking about the sun and the rays from the sun so if you go up really high up um, say you climb Mount Everest um, you better wear a sunscreen because you're gonna get a really horrible sunburn if it's sunny up there because there's not much atmosphere and the sun is very powerful um, you you maybe could stand on on Everest with no sunscreen on a sunny day for one minute and get really, really sunburned. Um, so as you travel away from Earth, you eventually get to a point where there's no gas molecules, and that's what we call space. So if you just traveled up and up and up, the atmosphere would become thinner and thinner and thinner, and eventually you would just be in what we call space, where there's no gas molecules. Um, and the, the thinness and the thickness of the atmosphere is what, what that's what the pressure change is. Okay, so it's going to be, as you go up, the pressure is going to go down because there will be less particles together. As you travel upwards, so the same thing on the top of Mount Everest, you're going to have very low pressure. Okay, and uh, it's, it says here atmospheric pressure is simply the weight of the air above. So the weight, this is kind of a strange definition, but, but just think about uh, the thinner, the thinner the atmosphere, the lower the pressure. The thicker the atmosphere, the higher the pressure. Um, 
So uh, this is basically talking about if you were to literally weigh the amount of air that's in that's around you you would get the atmospheric pressure and and this is uh, kind of complicated don't worry too much about it but it's basically um, it's basically the weight of the air I guess that's a good definition um, but we can talk way more about this it's kind of complicated okay so here we go we got Mount Everest right here um, this is a graph that shows pressure versus altitude and as we said before, if you're so this is um, this is considered generally one atmosphere um, down here at you know zero altitude, and as you travel up, the pressure goes down, and you can kind of see they have this color thing here. The, the, the color is getting lighter and lighter and lighter. You can just kind of imagine that's the particles becoming further and further apart. This is the atmosphere getting thinner and thinner and thinner. So as you get up to not even to the top of Mount Everest, you've already cut your pressure in half. Okay, so here's, here's you're not even to the top of Everest and you have half the air you had when you're in the ground, which is why... People need to bring air from the bottom up to the top of Mount Everest because literally you have not enough air to do much of anything when you're at the top of Everest. Uh, walking only a few steps is extremely hard. Uh, if you're breathing the air up here, you have to take twice as much air to get the same amount of oxygen. So, you know, if you were to jog, you know, try to jog a mile, up here it would be really really hard you would barely be able to breathe which is why sometimes um, people who are runners or people in some kind of sport will go up to this high high altitude and they'll train they'll run there and then when they come back down it seems really easy so yeah the thing to take away from this is as you go higher the atmosphere becomes thinner and the pressure decreases, goes down. So here we are at 36 kilometers above the Earth, which is incredibly, incredibly high. So that's like five Everest, four Everest. Um, you know, you're going to have almost no. This is like space up here. This is like outer space. You have almost no pressure, no air. Okay, so what do we know about temperature changes? This kind of gets a little bit more in detail, um, but basically what you should know is that there are four layers generally. Uh, you could say five if you want, um, but four is the main, the main thing. Um, the troposphere is the bottom layer, and this is kind of the layer where we all live this is kind of the main, the most important layer for us because we, we kind of live here. This is where weather happens. When you have a storm, it's always going to be in the troposphere. Um, you know, if it's snowing, those clouds, the snow is all, that's the troposphere. Um, if you go um, above those clouds, you get to the stratosphere. Okay, and the stratosphere is above the weather. Generally, you're going to look down and see clouds, or, you know, if, if there's a storm, you'd see clouds. But above that, you, you wouldn't really see the, the weather. You'd, it would be sunny. Um, and this is it's kind of interesting because it's the same temperature. Almost the entire stratosphere is the same temperature. Um, and as you go up, kind of, uh, towards the top part of the stratosphere, um, this starts to change temperature again, but, but it's kind of interesting. Um, the stratosphere is where um, the UV rays from the sun are, are mainly filtered out. So this is the layer that protects us from the sun, mostly. Um, and that's because the particles that are in the atmosphere, in the stratosphere, um, absorb these harmful rays 
and protect us from them. So um, if you, if you want to try to remember these um, more efficiently, the troposphere is where the weather happens. Stratosphere is where the UV light is mainly uh, filtered out. Okay. Um, so yeah, you can see here, this is all the, the troposphere. We got this kind of, what's going on here? We're in this kind of warm looking valley, looking up at these mountains. And, and right about here, it starts to be below freezing. You have this snow up here and, and these clouds up here. So um, this, is, this is evidence of the different layers. So most of this is the troposphere, but within the troposphere, you have things that are different. Uh, when you're down here, you're going to be warmer generally than when you're up on top of the mountain. Okay, so mesosphere. Mesosphere is the third layer. It's above the stratosphere. So we have troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere. And uh, basically as you go higher in the mesosphere, um, the temperature will go down. And an, an interesting thing um, about the mesosphere is, is this is, when you see a shooting star um, going through the sky at night, a shooting star, um, this is a, a, a comet or, or a meteor that's coming into the Earth's atmosphere and it's burning up and then it's on fire and it's disintegrating, it's, it's, it's becoming nothing um, and it's burning up in the mesosphere. That's where this happens. Um, and if it was, you know, if it was huge, uh, it might make it through the mesosphere and land on the Earth, but most, most um, meteors that you see, um, which are, you know, rocks in space, moving, trying to crash into the Earth, but they, almost all of them, 99%, burn up in the mesosphere, and that, that's what shooting stars are. So you might look up and say, Oh, hey, Bill, that's uh, that's the mesosphere up there, and then you know your friend will be really impressed, and you know that that'll be great. Um, so just remember, this is the third layer. This is where meteor meteors uh, burn burn away, and this is because um, the mesosphere is made of different different material than the other two layers, um, and it's it's in different uh, different concentrations, and this layer is going to be thinner than the other two layers because we're going up away from the earth. Okay, so troposphere, straso, stratosphere, mesosphere. Um, the fourth layer is pretty cool. Uh, thermosphere and, you know, thermo, this is kind of has to do with temperature, uh, you can imagine. Um, and this is because uh, this is kind of where um, certain energy is absorbed by oxygen okay and I don't know if you any of you have been very far north but or seen pictures but if you uh, you know I, I used to live in Alaska and you would go up to Alaska and certain parts of the year you'd look up and you'd see um, these beautiful colors in the sky and and uh, the you know they're called the aurora borealis I don't know if you've heard of that but um, these are these beautiful colors in the sky, and it's basically um, those colors happen because the thermosphere is absorbing solar energy from the sun, um, a certain type of solar energy. And it's being absorbed by oxygen. When, it, when it's absorbed, those particles get really excited, and they move around, and, and the movement of those particles creates this color, and it can be seen for hundreds of miles um, but only in certain parts of the world. So that's pretty that's pretty interesting. Um, thermosphere is also, if you see, um, if you guys like astronauts or spacemen, um, if a rocket from space or from the Earth is shot up into space, then uh, before the astronauts can really do much of anything, they are kind of floating around the Earth satellite, spaceship full of astronauts, anything is kind of circling around the Earth and they're they're floating in the thermosphere. That's where they are. Um, so when you see uh, a satellite that, that's orbiting the Earth or if you see a, um, 
you know, r the Russian space station where there's people hanging out on this this piece of metal floating in, in what they call space is actually the uh, thermosphere, which which is pretty interesting. So uh, you have these four layers, you know, uh, troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere. And so you can remember those by the thermosphere, um, or the, the troposphere is where there's weather, okay? The stratosphere is just above that, and that's what filters most of the sun's rays, so we can kind of go outside and not be burned to death. Um, mesosphere is, um, this is where meteorites burn, burn up. This is above the stratosphere. And then you have the thermosphere, where those, uh, those beautiful colors are formed, and also where spaceships kind of orbit the Earth or circle the Earth. Um, there's another layer, it's not mentioned here, um, but it's called the exosphere, and that's just, it's not as important because the exosphere is just um, the border between the thermosphere and like just no air at all. So the border between the atmosphere and just space is called the exosphere. So once you've crossed the exosphere, you're just going to float, you're just going to float and you, there's going to be no air at all. Um, so yeah, again, uh, as you go up, the thermosphere is going to have the lowest pressure of these four, and it's going to have uh, the, it's going to be highest up, it's going to, the particles are going to be further apart, um, so, and, it, you know, because as you travel up away from the earth, the particles separate, you have a very thin, thin amount of air, the least amount of air is going to be in the furthest layer. And if any of this is confusing, I un totally understand. Um, just review these slides, they have the definition here, and if you can't figure it out from just the slides, um, don't hesitate to send me an email and I will, I, will, I will try to explain it and I can also provide you with some videos on YouTube that show this really, really well. Um, and when I when we actually have class, I can demonstrate this more for you if, if you don't get it. But hopefully this makes sense. Um, there are four layers, and they have these different qualities, and they provide different things. Um, all of them are equally important. If we had no thermosphere or no mesosphere, um, you know, the world would be a totally different place, and that's important to to understand. Okay, so this is a big scary graph. Um, don't worry about it. It's um, basically talking about temperature versus altitude or height. Um, and we we talked a little bit about this, but I don't feel like it's um, you don't you don't need to memorize this. Um, but just know that as you go up through these different layers, temperature doesn't just go up as you go up. It, it goes up or it goes down and then it goes, it's the same and then it goes up and then it's the same and then it goes down and the same and up. So temperature changes based on the layer of atmosphere you're in, not just how high you are. So say you're at 90 miles or 140 kilometers. It's really hot up there. And that's kind of weird because you feel like, okay, at the top of a mountain, it's really cold. Why, when you're so high up, is it so hot? And, and this is because of the, the kind of properties of the thermosphere and the fact that there's gases that are absorbing a lot of energy up here. And this, this is uh, the aurora we were talking about. Um, and maybe you've seen pictures of this. It's very famous. But these are oxygen molecules. Okay, um, these are oxygen molecules. Okay, um, this is this is ozone, right? Oxygen, and uh, they're absorbing solar rays from the sun, and they create this amazing, beautiful color in the sky. And as you go higher and higher. The temperature actually keeps getting higher and higher because uh, as you get closer to the sun and further from the earth, 
you're protected less and less by these particles and it, it gets actually to be very very hot um, you know and then you know you, you can look at it, it's, it's the opposite down here when you go from the ground to Mount Everest it gets really really cold it, you know it says minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit that's extremely cold uh, probably it's colder than I've ever been exposed to and most people um, so yeah just from this kind of know the temperature is different it behaves differently in the different layers um, that's that's kind of complex but again just review this or, or um, let me know we can go over it again okay so how do the earth and the sun play off of each other what's the what, what's the effect of the earth on the sun and what's the effect of the sun on the earth so the sun is this gigantic ball of burning gases and it's so amazingly larger it's much much bigger than the earth so the earth has some effect on the sun but the sun has this huge effect on the earth and it's because the sun is gigantic and it's emitting all this radiation and, and we'll learn a little bit more about that in the next few slides um, so the earth has two principal motions um, I'll just go over this kind of um, generally but uh, it's got rotation and it's got revolution so the difference between rotation and revolution is um, as the you have this coffee cup and right now it's rotating this is rotation and you have revolution is if I have another object over here and it is moving around this object okay, this is revolving this is a revolution around my hand this cup if it's rotating it's just moving around itself so the earth moves uh, it rotates by itself which you probably know and that just creates the day time um, and it's got one full rotation per day and that's kind of what creates day and night and then you have revolution now this is a really really interesting one because revolution is what gives us the seasons and it's kind of what makes um, certain parts of the earth warmer in certain times and certain parts of the earth colder in times so um, like I said I used to live in Alaska Alaska is really affected by the revolution of the earth it's, it's very very uh, it, it has huge influence on Alaska the revolution and, and let me just explain that uh, in the winter time uh, in the most cold time in Alaska there's only a few minutes of sunlight so it's dark all the time and you can you can kind of understand why if it's dark all the time it's gonna be cold all the time so in winter in Alaska it's very very cold and it's very very dark and this is because of the revolution of the earth and, and we'll talk more about this but but it's really fascinating um, it, also in the summertime in Alaska there's only a few minutes of darkness uh, during the longest day there's maybe only 15 minutes of darkness and this is because of the revolution as well and when you have a, a a place where there's sun all the time it's it's totally it's changes the environment completely so um, Alaska looks totally different in the summer and the, in the winter it's covered in snow and ice in the winter and it's covered in plants and animals and flowers and berries in the summertime so um, this is all based on the revolution of the earth and um, maybe if you uh, kind of have the, you have the rainy season here and then the dry season it gets warmer and slightly colder at times in in Thailand um, this is also due to the revolution of the earth so this is what gives us seasons so it's not the spinning it's the the one object moving around the other object and, and the other object is the Sun so the earth is moving around the Sun and it's creating these differences throughout the year um, so um, 
the easiest way to describe this is that Earth's position changes as it travels in, in this revolution or, or what we call an orbit around the Sun. So the Earth is tilted on an axis. Um, this line, you could imagine a line running straight through the Earth. This is the Earth's axis. Okay, so we have the equator here, zero degrees. This is the, the line that splits the northern and southern hemisphere of the Earth. And then you have the axis, which is the line that runs crisscross or perpendicular to the, um, to the equator. And it's tilted. It's tilted 23 and a half degrees. And, and you know, if you are a big fan of trigonometry and degrees, then you can memorize that. But just know that it's tilted. If, if You don't really have to memorize, but it is 23 and a half degrees and, and it's tilted. And so, so what does this mean? Um, so right now, we can see that the sun is hitting, sun is over here in this picture. The sun is over here and it's actually gigantic. I'm drawing it kind of small, but just know that it's over here. And so the sun is shining as the earth, right? So it, it's, the earth is going to be uh, rotating, but it's going to be tilted. And so it's rotating like this. So just picture this diagram rotating, okay? And it's, but it's rotating on this axis, so it's spinning around. Imagine this is like a skewer going through the earth, and it's spinning on this axis. As it spins, it, in this diagram, the, set, the bottom half of this planet is going to be getting more sun. Okay, so South America, which is right here, is on the southern hemisphere. When the Earth is tilted this way, so that the bottom half of the Earth is kind of towards the sun, as it's spinning, this is going to get more sun. This is summertime. This is what summertime is. So if you have, uh, you know, one hemisphere, this, the bottom part of the Earth, as it spins, is going to get more sun. In this diagram, as the as this Earth spins around this kind of skewer, you're going to have more shade per spin. So as this spins, the bottom half is going to get more sun, and the top half is going to get less sun. And this is always changing as the as the Earth moves around the sun. Um, you can get the opposite. So uh, the half of the year, maybe it's like this, and then as the season changed, then you'd have this other kind of skewer. You, you can kind of picture the Earth kind of moving this way, and then you have the opposite. So then it would be summer in the northern hemisphere and, and winter in the, uh, in the uh, southern hemisphere. So don't be freaked out if this is uh, worrying you at all. Um, it's, it's a little bit easier to picture if you have like a tennis ball or something and maybe I'll bring some into class and we can kind of work this out together but um, if you want um, you can also look this up on YouTube just look, look up tilt of earth's axis on YouTube and you will get 50 videos um, showing you how to kind of have this in motion and uh, just know that the earth is tilted and the tilt combined with how the Earth moves around the sun is what causes the, the seasons. Okay, so this is some fancy words here. We have solstices and equinoxes. So solstices are basically two times a year. Equinoxes are also two times per year. Um, so hopefully um, you guys know already that one rotation of the Earth is one day, and one revolution of the Earth around the Sun is one year. So every year, at some point, the Sun is, is shining for the longest at a particular set of points on the Earth. So... Uh, 
maybe right here as the earth spins we have this area is getting the most light per per day for this one day um, and the longest day, so when it's sunny, when it's light for the longest period of time, that's the summer solstice. So people measured the, the length of the day, and the day with, that is the longest, um, it's going to be the summer solstice. And this is different, but it's um, in the northern hemisphere, it's June 21st or 22nd, um, and it's, this is considered the first day of summer. This is when it's really sunny the most. It's, you're never going to get more sun per day than, than on the summer solstice. And the, the winter solstice, December 21st or 22nd. And if, if anyone can kind of see the, the connection here, these are six months apart. This is, this is June and this is December. You have, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, January, February, January, February, March, April, May, June six months and that's because these are exactly equally apart so this is going to be one side of the sun and as it travels it's going to go on the other side of the sun so this is our this is our sun and then so winter solstice summer solstice it's going to continue to kind of make its way around the earth okay um so this is the longest day and this is the shortest day winter solstice summer solstice also you have equinoxes okay and an equinox is basically when you it's the time in between summer and winter so they kind of split this up into four each uh, three months apart and as you get autumn um, autumn the autumnal equinox is after September 22nd or 23rd, the days will get longer in the north. But uh, after you get, and then you'll get to the, after you get to the autumnal equinox, you'll get to the winter solstice, then the spring equinox, then the summer solstice. So um, that's kind of all we have time for, but uh, if this stuff is confusing, which I know that it probably is, since this is maybe the first time you've seen a lot of this information. Um, we can definitely go over this again and uh, if you're very confused please send me an email. Um, I'd be happy to give you some links to uh, videos that kind of show this stuff or if you have specific questions please let me know. Also you can review the slides um, on the website. Okay, uh, talk to you guys later. Bye. Yeah, honestly, if you have, uh, like, any feedback or anything, just don't hesitate to let me know. This, this is just trying to know. What are you teaching now? Now? What, 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 are the, what level are they at right now? Okay. <coughs> they just told you. Oh, okay. You might like, I look at what you have to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah,
and like all these things that I did in physics were the same time. And I'm like, I wonder if they even know how to do this. Yes, so I think you might play one more. I think they are around 13 years old. Oh, really? I think that's not sure. I don't know either. It's different. I have stickers. I have many different classes. Because I think you might play one six that are around 17. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I noticed. That was for you, right? Yeah, I noticed very well. 